Hey, what's up guys, Aaron over here, and welcome back to episode of my F1 2020 My Team Career Mode, episode 139 today for the British Grand Prix in Season 8. If you guys did miss the previous one at the Austrian Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that out, because that was one for the underdogs, because surprise, surprise, well, it's not really actually much of a surprise these days, I guess, but George Russell was able to secure another win for Alfa Romeo. It was a crazy race in the end, with one of our rivals, Lando Norris, being out of the Grand Prix. We did manage to beat Espen Ocon, so he made up a slight bit of ground in the championship. Not a massive amount. Ocon was really the one that won out in the end, but uh, it was a very entertaining race. There was a lot of action, yeah, especially with other drivers, really. The AI were really on top form, being very aggressive with one another, uh, but in the end, we just couldn't quite do enough right at the end to get Russell, although our car was looking pretty damn quick around there. Schumacher did fall away in the end a bit. Speaking of Schumacher, going into this episode, then halfway through the season now, we have to go about re-signing our teammate and unlike when we first had Schumacher in our team in season one I am not looking to get rid of him for the second half of this season we will, we will be looking to re-sign him he's 94 rated yeah okay he didn't have the greatest race in the end uh, on the last one but he won Monaco had a strong race at Spain clearly has gone to grips with the car I don't know what it quite was really with his AI not taking to the car maybe or getting stuck in a lot of traffic just being unlucky maybe in the first few rounds but now I feel he feel like he's maybe not quite as quick as some of our previous teammates but I think he's he's there and thereabouts and he's doing enough to help us out in the constructors for sure and in the mix and you know a few times now he's actually been quicker than us in qualifying so fair play obviously it's not my strongest part of the game but still he's doing the job and he's fast enough to beat me on the Saturday so you've got to give it to him at least on that front but uh, yeah following the Austrian Grand Prix then unlucky for Lando Norris uh, Ocon with a kind of middle the road P5. So he leads the championship then uh, to Norris by eight points. We're further three points back. So, you know, we're back in the mix of things after having two very tough races at Baku and Canada. But we come now to Silverstone, the British Grand Prix. Now, usually I'd say this is kind of a damage limitation circuit for us. But last season, we did finally break the curse that we've had on F1 2020 with Silverstone and our home Grand Prix. Before then, we were kind of very much channeling the Jensen Button vibes of the team colours of not having a great race ever at Silverstone either, you know, issues in qualifying, getting knocked out early or just issues in the race, not a great race pace. Overall, the AI, to be fair, I think some of you guys will agree as well, the AI are very strong around Silverstone. It's, you know, not exactly always so consistent track to track. This is definitely a track where the AI are super, super quick. Uh, but last uh, last season, Season 7, we broke that curse and we ended up winning the Grand Prix after a fantastic battle with Lando. So let's hope maybe we can carry that momentum from last season and then take some learnings from it. But into Q1 then, through into Q2, not much of an issue for us. Surprising to see, well, Russell right at the top. Obviously, not maybe surprising that much because, you know, we know the AI build momentum and he won the last race, so he's clearly got some momentum now. So are we going to now see from now on Russell being right up there like he was at the end of Season 7 maybe because he's now got that win and now that AI kind of coding or whatever is going to kick in that we've seen so many times so far this, uh, this series where he just now goes goes and takes that win and just does even better. But what, what was surprising to me was just the fact that how far ahead of his teammate he was. He was 2.4 seconds quicker in Q1, top of the table, and uh, Latifi was down in P18. So it's not even just the fact that his AI is gaining momentum like we've seen other AI do. He, he, he individually versus Latifi and Alfa Romeo is just something else. And I'm just, I don't know what to say about it anymore. I've lost any kind of, you know, uh, way of describing already. It's just a case of, okay, we'll just accept the fact that he's just some strange alien right now in our career mode save of ours. Um, I don't know if, if you've got a very quick, you know, AI and you let me know in the comments below. Do you guys have specific AI? Maybe not Russell, you know, a specific just uh, person in your career mode saves that has the same sort of alien pace that Russell is showing for us in, in my career mode save because yeah, it's very, very bonkers. I mean, it's entertaining obviously, but uh, I've never seen such d disparity between two AI teammates in the same car, basically. Um, but obviously, it's going to uh, spice things up because we've just got another car, basically, to battle along with Ocon, Norris, Schumacher, all the above, obviously, that are kind of usual suspects in Q3. And I assume Russell will be looking to get into Q3 this time. Uh, to be fair, I think, if I remember correctly, didn't he, didn't Russell get pole position in, in last season, in Season 7, the British Grand Prix, I think? So, to be fair, if, in terms of pedigree and form, he might just be on the money here. So, let's con 
continue on and see how we go, basically, through this qualifying session. Just on our first flying lap in Q2, wasn't that amazing? There was a bit of understeer, and just generally, I wasn't as tight on my lines as I thought I could have been in sectors two, especially. Um, so we, I think we might have to go again, because looking at that, we've only got one tenth down to Leclerc and the Ferrari, and, well, the Ferrari was on pole position last race, so I think we're going to have to go again, because even other people, looks like Lando as well, didn't set particularly quick time. Schumacher is outside the top ten right now, so I think definitely there's uh, everyone has to go again, basically, maybe barring Russell and Giovinazzi up there, who got a good lap in from the get-go. So here we go then for that second flyer, unfortunately having to burn a new set of soft compound tyres. So that means we only have one set then for the top 10 shootout, and that's if we get through. That's not a given. You know, this is the bogey circuit for us, maybe. Here we go, though. We gained about four tenths in the last corners alone. That's how slow I was at the very end of the lap. I was quite cautious, to be fair, uh, not wanting to lock up, but we gained enough time up into the top 10. P7, Ocon got through on the medium compound. So the championship leader has a different strategy, maybe, then, for the, the, the race start. Medium time might be able to go longer and maybe have a bit more pace in the middle of the race, so maybe that might be a blind from Ocon to get through, but Lando Norris, our other rival in the championship, he's knocked out. The Red Bull does not get through. Sainz made it through, his slower teammate, but he did not. So that is big news then for the championship fight. The man who DNF last race had to try and bounce back at the home Grand Prix. Lando on the back foot then for Sunday already. So it's now going to be me v Ocon in terms of the, the championship fight, but you know, you've got the likes of Schumacher up there as well, who's quicker than me in Q2, and Russell. Well, well, he was top of the both sessions, wasn't he there? And Giovinazzi also looked pretty, pretty, pretty handy as well, uh, along with Leclerc, maybe in the other Ferrari. So let's see how we go on this one and only flyer. We are slower than Giovinazzi Hamilton. It's a 120.2, and there were a few people going sub uh, what, 120 into the 119, so I don't think that's going to be too great. We're P7 on the road, and look at this. At the end of the session, we've only got one and a half minutes to go, which is pretty much the cutoff of going out and doing a lap, and no one's going out. So I think everyone, barring Ocon, um, had to burn an extra set of soft tyres in Q2, so none of us are going out for a second run. I've never actually seen seen this completely uh, barren track if this was real life you know everyone would be up in uproar of no track action to end the day in Q3 and so in the end of it George Russell did indeed get pole position for this one I think that's a full flush you know faster than Q1 Q2 and Q3 from Georgie boy over there Leclerc in second place uh, showing that he does have the pace in the Ferrari just unlucky not to get that elusive win in this season so so far, Schumacher up into third place, showing the car as pace, but showing that maybe I have a lack of that. So we've maybe got a little bit of work to do in the race, but to be fair to us, our, you know, our nearest rival, Ocon, then, is in P6. So he's right next to us, really. So we're not actually that much of a disaster. It's kind of other people not in the championship fight being quicker. So it's, you know, just got to try and do the best job we can, obviously, against Ocon and hope we can try and, you know, not see Lando make a jump up from wherever he was in P12, basically. So let's go to the grid and see what we can do from P7. Welcome along then to Great Britain and the Great Silverstone Circuit for today's Grand Prix. The 3.6 miles of the Silverstone Circuit in Great Britain is hallowed ground to the Formula One faithful. We have 18 corners that wrap around this former World War II airbase and some good passing opportunities at the end of the DRS zones. Anthony Davidson is alongside me as usual for the race today. Now, let's talk about Charles Leclerc. Looks like they've got a tough race in store today as grid penalties from changing power unit components has forced them further down the field. But on the bright side, at least those fresh components can help them maintain the power they need to come through the pack. I expect to see them take a more aggressive approach today to make up for the compromise start. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Mick Schumacher lines up on pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Giovinazzi, Ocon, the owner driver, and Verstappen, Sainz, Stroll, Gasly, and George Russell, Norris, Leclerc, Daniel Kvyat, and Albon, Bottas, Matsushita, Kevin Magnussen, and Nicholas Latifi, De Vries, Aitken, Joe, and Luca Giotto. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? So for a second season in a row, it is an absolute tragedy here. I'm pretty sure this happened in season seven as well. Russell got pole position 
but he has engine penalties that obviously any of the AI can have at any races, but it seems like Alfa Romeo and Russell, their AI, you know, they seem to just t want to take them at the home race when he gets pole. It's a, it's a bit of a tragedy there. So once again, Russell is not actually on pole then for the race start at Silverstone. And instead, because Otto Leclerc had penalties as well, Schumacher, our teammate, is the one that lines up on pole. And Hamilton in the other McLaren uh, is in second place. So that'll be at least something for the, for the fan home fans to see Lewis up there. But surprising to see Schumacher of all people then on pole for this race start. We move up the order as well. So that helps us out. But Ocon does as well because he didn't have any penalties. Uh, and actually, in the end of it, Russell's actually next to, next to Norris on the starting grid. Um, so both of those guys will be wanting to try and make a jump up. Russell to try and obviously claim back, you know, a top spot from what would have been pole. And then obviously Lando wanted to try and fight back to help his uh, chance out in the championship versus myself and Ocon and others. But uh, in terms of race strategy then, indicated one stops here. Now, last season, we did go on to the hard compound attire because we've seen the FOM car. It's just not that great. I feel with a tire warm up and kind of overheats too quickly around Silverstone. So I went for the hard compound last season. That worked out for us and helped us, I think, get us, get us that win around here. So I'm aiming for maybe that again, but you just never know. Season to season, things change sometimes so dramatically with the tire and the car, the way out it feels. You know, we've got the Honda engine. Will that change things? I don't know. So let's just see how it goes in the race, but I may be leaning towards the hard compound attire, but let's just see how the race start goes and we can hopefully get a good getaway and overtake Ocon at the start and then go from there. So here we go then, one final home race on F1 2020 in this My Team Career Motor. Five red lights and we're underway for 26 laps around Silverstone and it is an absolutely biblical start from us. We overtake Ocon and Giovinazzi in one foul swoop. It's an electric start from us. Schumacher gets a good getaway. There was a slight bit of contact apparently with Giovinazzi. Didn't really feel it on my force feedback at all. Hamilton quite close to Schumacher's rear end though. So Hamilton feeling a bit punchy at the start of this race. But Schumacher does enough to cover him off into Village as we had a good getaway but then locked up a bit in Village and we're under attack from Giovinazzi and Ocon. It's nearly three abreast into the next uh, section. The left hander into Luffield then the right hander Ocon has got past Giovinazzi with defend enough and remember Ocon is on the medium compound attire. He's the only man in the top 10 that started on medium so he might be a bit slower right now but he might be playing the longer game being quicker at the end of this stint when our soft compound attire starts to go off a little bit more but now we're looking on and focusing on George Russell here in the background obviously our on pole position on Saturday but then taking a 10 place grid penalty and he's looking to try and get past Leclerc who also was going to share the front row with him but got a penalty as well and then you've got Lando Norris in the Red Bull who just got knocked out fair and square in Q2 and is trying to get through the racing point car but look at this Russell V Leclerc the two that were meant to be sharing the front row doing battle here for what I think is like P10 and P11 or P9 and P10 at this point and you've also got Lando here still fighting that racing point it looks like the racing point has actually held up the Red Bull so this is not great for Lando it's Oh, Ocon and Giovinazzi make contact and the Italians out. The Italians out of the British Grand Prix. And that is a, an interesting camera angle. Then the tyre is actually blocking the camera placement there. So the Ferrari is out then. So Leclerc is the only one flying the flag for Ferrari now today. Schumacher still leads from Hamilton to myself. Uh, as we get an update there, but uh, no, uh, no, no yellows or caution for that. Looks like the the FI believe they can get that car safely out of the way. But Giovinazzi then taken out of this Grand Prix then by Espen Ocon. A little bit iffy into turn one, but obviously a bit of a racing incident because with the AI they can't really do much. They're always just going to kind of bunch up and Constantine up like that. But now we watch on uh, onto the very next lap. Uh, Russell v Gasly then, and the Alfa Romeo getting past the Mercedes car, the Ferrari of Leclerc in the mix, and oh no, oh it's an absolute calamity for Ferrari as Leclerc is out in the same corner as his teammate. It's a double DNF for Ferrari and both times it's down to just a really, really unfortunate sort of pinching in effect at turn one. It happened already with Ocon v Giovinazzi but that was two abreast. Three wide was never going to work. I don't know why Leclerc went for that move and so uh, both Ferraris are out. They're going to get zero points. That's going to be very good news for the people around them in the Constructors Championship but we now move on there on the restart here and it's all bunched up so can we do anything to maybe attack Hamilton as Schumacher bolts a little bit early here and kind of catches me off guard a little bit as well as Hamilton and we lose a bit of traction into the final two corners Hamilton gets a bit of a, a breathing room to us but Ocon has also equally had such a 
poor getaway into turn one, though. We're catching up to Hamilton. Some information on Ocon. They have an issue with their car. They're going to be slow. And as we pressurise Hamilton into Village, I thought I could maybe have a little lunge at our fellow Brit, you know. We've been told on the radio, Ocon has a mechanical issue. So he's going to be slow and he's going to be limping around for maybe the next part of this Grand Prix. So that's huge for the championship. That's massive for, for not only us, but also for Lando, who's catching up to Ocon maybe in this Grand Prix. He probably will do now that he's got the issue because look how slow he is. Just this is on the same lap then as we restarted from the safety car and already into Magda Beckett. He's been done by Verstappen and he's got Sainz right behind him. And look at George Russell pushing his way through the racing point of Stroll there, getting the elbows out. And so Russell, the pole sitter, he's up in. He's only two places behind Ocon now. So this is a massive uh, issue for Ocon. He's so slow and it's so early in this race, you know. So usually when mechanical failures like this, eventually uh, and the AI can, they can sort it out. So it might not be completely over for Ocon, but right now it is very much pain and wincing at watching this because he's a sitting duck and Russell powers past him into Cops. And so that's uh, that's him up into, well, the top five, I think, or top six then for Russell. So good recovery. And look at Lando as well recovering as he goes round the outside in the middle of Magda Beckett. It's a great move there for the Red Bull man. And now, oh, this is awkward. Look at this. Norris coming up to overtake Ocon and he gets past Ocon. So Ocon was probably getting very smug. The championship leader far out ahead of Lando Norris on the race start. But the man who's made even bigger gains in this race is George Russell. He's in the top five. He does have have, though, a five-second penalty. So he must have got that for maybe overtaking a car or something or other in the safety car here, I guess. But back to our action, we've got Hamilton v Schumacher, and we're here behind and close enough to get the toe off our teammate. Schumacher is going to get overtaken by two cars, so it's unfortunate for our teammate. Good for us, though. We're up into P2. Hamilton leads, though. It's a 1-2 for two Brits here, but it's a different team. Hamilton in the McLaren. Myself, obviously, in the Harata racing car here in P2, but Schumacher just got done there. You know, DRS for both of us. That's how powerful it can be on that back straight. But now, the question is, right, Schumacher, he's maybe fallen away. Can we do anything to get Hamilton? We have a little look into Village, but thought better of it. Just going to play the patient game and essentially wait for the same point of the circuit, that back straight off the back of uh, Magda Beckett. And here we are then with DRS over. I mean, look how quick we are. And no, no wonder Schumacher was a sitting duck. That DRS is so powerful with these maxed out cars at the end of the back straight, especially if you're the car leading with no DRS, but speaking of being quick in a straight line, look at Hamilton come back at us, even though we're deploying ERS all the way down this straight, because Hamilton has DRS here, he's able to re-overtake us, but we give him a good old fight it's very close, round the outside to the inside of the field, and we're going to squeeze out Hamilton and retake the lead, so he came back fighting in the field, and Schumacher now is going to a good run, and our teammates now trying to get the double overtake done he forces our hand, we have to give him some room on the inside of Cops, and Schumacher's done it. He's back into the lead of this Grand Prix. A fabulous little move there. Played the patient game even better than I did and just waited for his time to slip it down the inside of Hamilton in Luffield and then just got a mega run and forced me to give him some room in cops because if I turned in, there would have been a crash there. But speaking of, we're going to come back at him though and re-overtake him. So it's a 1-2 then for the team. Hopefully, we can try and kind of stabilise this and keep this going because obviously last time, Season 7, didn't we get a 1-2 with myself and Lando? Uh, if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure I got the win. I can't remember if Lando actually got second. I'm pretty sure he did. Um, so hopefully we can try and uh, see the top left be the same at the end of the Grand Prix. But hopefully we're the ones in P1 and Schumacher is in P2. But our car once again this season is looking pretty strong around here and we've come in a lot later than we did last season. The tyres have actually held up really nicely. We're focusing on George Russell here because remember he's got a five second penalty that he has to give so he's going to be dented further back. So what a what a, a sad day, a sad weekend. He lost pole and then he's been given a five second penalty in the race so he's having to re recover again because he's going to go behind some, some cars for sure with five seconds being quite a lot obviously when the cars are so close together. But anyway back to our race then lap 12 we've made the pit stop we're on to mediums i should add and we've come out behind schumacher 
because he's actually gone faster on his uh, on his in lap there. The overcuts were. We've not been too quick on the out lap because the tyres weren't really heating up that quickly and they felt a bit slow in understeery. And Schumacher's gone quicker on the worn soft compound tyre. Meanwhile, behind Russell, like I said, has lost positions. He's now back behind uh, Pierre Gasly and the Mercedes there behind uh, the Red Bull of Science as well, and also I think uh, potentially Lando Norris as well as well. So Russell's gonna have to really make some time up, and he's wasting no time at all as he gets through. Sorry, not even it's not even Gasly, it's Verstappen in the Mercedes car, but he makes light work of him. Uh, Russell's really showing why he probably deserved pole position to be honest, because he's looking so quick, getting past all these very quick cars really. But uh, yeah, Schumacher leads then, myself in second, Hamilton behind then. Obviously that's on the road effectively. The actual race leader as it stands right now yet to pit in this Grand Prix is actually Esben Ocon where the load of few Haas cars and Alpha Tauris behind him who are yet to pit but yeah remember Ocon starts on the mediums so he's going longer now the thing is like I said he had a mechanical issue that eventually always fixes itself it's only temporary for the AI so if it fixes for him now and he's got clean air he actually might be able to recover a bit of time and still might actually have a good result in this race if his car fixes itself in time for him to actually use that clean air and use, I assume, the soft compound at the end of this race, because it looks like everyone's doing a one-stop, soft to medium or medium to soft. But at the moment, then, in this race, lap number 13, and Schumacher's got a 1.6 gap to me, and it looks like, although we've got maybe the, you know, the tyre wear and the tyre heating is not too bad on the mediums, the general pace, I'm just not as quick as Schumacher, so although maybe the car is fine with the mediums this time around compared to last season I'm just not feeling too punchy I mean you can see their red second sector green in the first and there's no one ahead of me to give me dirty air so it's just be a bit slow basically in that second sector and Hamilton is exploiting that a lot here and catching us and putting us under pressure and he's going to be literally now right under our rear wing will he go for a move into turn one no doesn't quite have enough speed to make a dive there but he will go for one into cops here he goes flat out here a little lift off to give him some space and we make a little bit of high speed contact there Hamilton is very lucky man if I didn't let off a little bit that would have been a crash but look how close this is we literally grazed tires and almost interlocked tires in the middle of that corner and this is getting so close to the rear end we're really pushing the limit of pushing each other to, to each side of the circuit it's a great little scrap between Hamilton but it's not helping our cause in terms of the race win and it may just be slipping away from us and into the hands of our teammate Mick Schumacher because he got out ahead of us and for, for him luckily enough he's not in a battle here he's in clean air and he's pulling away the gap is three seconds now and Hamilton goes for move to the inside we're gonna break early catch him with the massive dummy and completely exploit him going to the inside I, I saw that from a mile away I was like he's gonna dive to the inside let's just break early cut in here I know he's gonna overshoot it so that was really that was good stuff I enjoyed that dummying Hamilton into turn one there but what I haven't enjoyed was the fact that it's even though it's a great battle it's lost us that time to Schumacher um, and we lost two seconds there, you know, in, in two laps alone. So maybe the win is already away from us with our teammates, uh, you know, just in clean air, doing the business, you know, doing what he needs to do to stretch that tyre compound and, you know, just get the pace down, basically, and control the Grand Prix. Meanwhile, we've got Lando recovering there. Uh, his teammate Sainz was under pressure from Russell. And there is Ocon then. Good timing. I was about to say, where is Ocon? Well, there he is. He's made his pit stop onto the soft compound tyre. And I believe his car is fixed now. So Ocon, like I said, watch out for him. I think he could still get some decent points, you know, and limit the damage considering how bad it looked in the first stint for him. But lap 16, 10 laps to go. Hamilton's passes. Now, at this point, this was, you know, now what, three, four laps of us fighting like this. I thought, enough's enough. I think we need to play this tactically. I need to just maybe sit by on Hamilton, do what we've done in the past around Silverstone, use a car like our horse and carriage, and let Hamilton pull me along with DRS, because clearly he's a little bit quicker in a straight line. Let's use him to try and close up to Schumacher. So that's my game plan. We're going to stick by on Hamilton on purpose and try and, you know, basically use him to catch up to Schumacher if we can. Meanwhile, you saw there Ocon making moves. He's already set a fast up of the Grand Prix as well in this Grand Prix, so he is looking quick 
once again. And we'll be driving with a bit of anger, I sense, at, you know, how slow he was in the first part of this race. And also, someone else making moves is Russell nearly made a little move on the outside of Lando Norris. The two cars that were outside the top ten recovering in this race. They're battling each other. Russell's got past signs already. He's looking to get past the second Red Bull of the afternoon. DRS open. And it's a very easy pass then for the Alfa Romeo. But I suspect Norris may come back at him, though. I don't think it's a slam dunk overtake there. But meanwhile, you can see up the road, uh, myself behind Hamilton, just using him with well, for DRS, essentially, trying to close up to Schumacher. And it's slightly working. Not massively. But like I said, don't count out Lando Norris. Not a slam dunk move for Russell. And Norris has re-overtaken the Brit. Uh, or his other Brit, I should say. And he's uh, back up into P4 in this race. Uh, but Ocon continues to make moves. He's now past Gasly. So that's him. Now, the next car along, I think, is, is Carlos Sainz. So he's only, like, you know, two cars away or three cars away from being right there with uh, Norris, maybe, as Ocon makes a move on the second Mercedes. Sorry. So uh, now he'll be right there just behind that fight between Russell and the two Red Bull cars. Look at the commitment there from Ocon. Brilliant stuff on the outside of the Mercedes. And next up is Nicholas Latifi in the second uh, Alfa Romeo. It's actually, sorry, I misjudged where everyone is, actually. That's Ocon in now. I think P... I want to say P8, I think. I think Latifi's in P7, uh, Sainz in P6, then Russell P5. And as you can see on the top left then. But here we are, lap 20. We're making a move on Hamilton now. I've had enough of being behind Hamilton because you can see in the top left, our plan didn't really work. The gap is four seconds. It did initially come down to 2.8, but then from lap 18 to 20, Hamilton started to slow up quite, quite a fair bit with the tyre wear and so we lost more ground. So I've overtaken Hamilton. We're going to bolt away and just try and secure the 1-2 for the team. Obviously, I would love for me to get the win, but it, you can't get every single one. And fair play to Schumacher for staying out of, you know, staying out of trouble, basically, and then being able to just get his foot down and build the gap for the lead. So the least I can do then as a teammate and as, you know, as a team boss for the team is to secure the 1-2, hopefully. But it's not going to be easy because uh, Lando Norris and George Russell already in the back then of Hamilton. This is on literally the next lap they've already caught up to him and Norris down the inside he was already fighting Russell and had to re-overtake him uh, through Magda Beckett and they were having a fight a side by side moment but now he's gone and overtaken the, the McLaren and put a car between them but the battle really is between Russell and Norris Hamilton just falling away he's just there for the journey he's just there as a passenger and Russell gets past him so the battle continues then Russell v Norris and this time they might be chasing after me as well because there we are Norris up into a podium from being knocked out in Q2 Russell chasing after a podium after being, you know, down uh, 10 places from pole position. And then here is Ocon overtaking the other Alfa Romeo, Latifi. And so that's Ocon up into, I think, P7 or 6. He's chasing after Sainz now, I believe. So it's still, you know, considering how slow he was in stint one. If I was him, I would take this. The fact that he's still getting a couple of points here because it looked like he was going to get effectively zero points and kind of be the same as a DNF, essentially. So it's a big turnaround for the McLaren man to at least get some points but at the moment now feeling the pressure a bit because you can see Lando and Russell are looking rapid and although the medium tyre wasn't as horrendous as it has been in previous seasons I'm thinking now in hindsight maybe we should have just gone back to the hard compound like we did in season 7 because even though the tyre has been performing well the tyre wear has been pretty damn high and I'm feeling the tyre wear very much so now as you might just see on board here because the understeer is very much there and the lack of traction is also very much there versus these AI because little twitch there and we look behind us we deploy ERS on the exit but Norris is going to get a good run and uh, well we're saving ERS for the second part of the lap and Norris down the inside we give him the room we deploy a bit of ERS to try and fight him into Magda Beckett we're going to have to lift off a bit give him the room and it's so so close Lando cuts across us but the reason why I wasn't using more ERS there was because I would rather be behind Norris here to get the slipstream. Look, even without DRS, the slipstream is so powerful here that I'm able to re-overtake him up into P2. So playing a bit of, you know, Formula 1 chess here of where I want to be at what part of the circuit. But for how long can we hang on here? Lap 24 that was. We're now here on towards the, the second last lap, onto the last lap of the Grand Prix, going very defensive to the inside to stop Norris. Bit of contact made on the rear end there. Didn't even realise at the time that Norris hit us a little bit. And Russell, <laughs> Russell trying to make a move on Norris there. 
and he got cut off. He got cut off on the circuit. That was so, so close. But here we are then, onto the last lap of the Grand Prix, and look at the tyre wear. 66% on the front left. The tyres are really, really second hand. Schumacher far and away has got this win in the bag, but it's a big lock up from us at Village, and Norris is going to put us under more pressure. He's round the outside. He did get his nose through. Can we get the traction pick up here? We're going to be a sitting duck, though. It's a DRS zone, remember. And so Norris and Russell both have DRS, and I can do nothing about this in a straight line. They both got DRS. They're both rounders. Either side of us all been in contact with Norris and Russell. And so now the two Brits are doing a bit of battle. Norris, can he go around the outside of Russell? No, not quite. I'm hoping these two can fight enough where I can get back in the mix of things. But it's so tough because I just don't have the, the acceleration. Every corner, we're losing out to them. And it's just very, it's, it's a tough one to take because I want to do more, but I can't really do more. I'm already flat out with ERS fuel, but the tyres just not allowing me to do that. Sights even almost got us into Baggins and Beckett's. That's how uh, bad the traction acceleration was. And so as we look ahead of us, DRS open, just trying to hang on the back of Norris. But in the end, this man will come to a comfortable win around the British Grand Prix. Mick Schumacher will, will win his second race of this season for us and the team. And George Russell will recover for a pretty fair second place. Norris third. It's a brilliant recovery from both Norris and Russell. We come home in P4. It's so frustrating because we, we could have got P2, but the tyre wear. The tyre was a nightmare. I, I literally had no traction there. And it wasn't even tyre wear at the end of it. That move before Luffield, that was just DRS. So they just slam dunk got me. And so it's only a P4. Plenty of action here at Silverstone. It was a memorable race. And what an impressive victory. Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralised. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. Welcome then to the podium, our top three drivers. What a great effort from them today in a very difficult race. So fair play, fair play then. Mick Schumacher has got his second win for the team under his belt. His third win total in his career in this My Team Save of Ours. We've come home not even on the podium, which, like I said at the end there, was bittersweet really because it would have been sick to have another 1-2 at, at the home race to end it off. The, you know, the final home race of the entire series on this game. But uh, yeah, I mean, it wasn't even tire in the end. It was just DRS. Russell and Norris uh, just waltzed past me. And then I actually couldn't come back at them because then of the tire wear. Because science even got us nearly into the Magda, Magda Beckett. So to be fair, I'm just happy we came home with P4 to get some points on Ocon, I guess. Norris gets some more points on Ocon then. So in the end of it, Norris actually had a better race. I would have thought at the start of this Grand Prix. Ocon in, you know, the second row. Norris down out, out of Q2. Uh, and he's come away with the championship lead. Although I say that championship lead, they're actually both on the same. Well, that's amazing. They're both on the same points. 101 points each. And we are then six points back with 95. So this thing is mega mega close going into the second half of this championship season and George Russell is there in P4 Mick Schumacher P5 you know if those two get you know a few more podiums and we're not and myself Ocon and Norris a little bit lower down they could get into the tile fight you know it could be a five way fight I don't want to speak too early right now I'll just say it's a three way fight with those two just being very strong uh, teammates and well Russell's not a teammate just a random span of the work basically but exciting times in the championship as well to be fair with us getting one in four we do actually take the lead of the Constructors versus McLaren because Hamilton fell away and he only just finished ahead of Ocon. So it's actually a strong day in the office for the team. So I can't be too, too annoyed at that. But still a bittersweet taste in the mouth after potentially seeing the win or the 1-2 slip away from us. But an entertaining British Grand Prix nonetheless. If you guys did enjoy that, hit that like button. Let me know your thought in the comments below. If you're on here around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys for the next one. Till then, goodbye.